So, yeah, if more games, I would love the Grade Shop to be an idea in a lot more games. I definitely think it offers some really cool things that could be done because also it's not like, um, what's a good way of putting it? Oh, this is super cool. Um, it's like some, you could have a friend whose playthrough definitely varies due to what they also chose in their grade shop. So it gives a lot of freedom. Like if you enjoyed something in one part of the game, but you didn't in another part, or you really had some struggles, you can do things that help you out vastly. Like I hate regaining all my, all my arts, which are like your special moves in, uh, Tails games. Oh, <laughs> little bros. Um, like, I do not want to regain. Because to get special moves, you have to use a move a certain amount of times, and then to get an upgraded version of two moves combined, you have to use both of moves for a certain amount of time. And it can just. It can be a lot if you're really going for something. So, for me, carrying over arts is a big deal. For some of my friends who really enjoy that, carrying that over, man, they, they love the hunt of new skills and since they know how to get them really quickly they they enjoy getting them again i do not um i think it takes up too much of my battle time and i want to do battle time with sick combos that i that i earned by using them in other ways so that's it but yeah if more things have that grade shop oh boy they should put that on the back of the box this game has a new game plus grade shop that's buy for me day one. <laughs> Games with New Game Plus, I love. I feel like they offer so much. And I get some of them. Some New Game Pluses are terrible. Don't get me wrong. Some of them break the game in ways that you never would have imagined to break the game. But I feel like that's also a little bit of the fun of that. It's like, if I, if I wanted to play the game normal again, I would just play the game again on normal. I don't want the same experience I just had. I want a crazy experience. And I think, like, uh, what's a good way of describing it? Like, Divinity? You can get New Game Plus that just destroys that game. And the creators are like, yeah, we know. But if you want the original gameplay, just play it again. And just do it on normal again, like what you just did. That's that's why I think there's not enough done sometimes to separate a new game plus from just starting it over. I'm in favor of both. I don't think either one is wrong. It's just which one I prefer. Every time it goes back to my conversation about kicks. I love kicks sometimes, I hate kicks other times, but at the end of the day, I love video games and that's the problem. <laughs> Either way, as long as I've been able to kick a monster through a door or something, like I'm not gonna be, I'm not gonna be super salty about it. I think that's something that we can all kind of get used to, is that as much as we enjoy a certain type of thing, we can look at it and we can go, huh. I wish it had this aspect, but at the end of the day, I think it's fantastic. It was like my entire rant about having to rerun certain content in Neo yesterday. I was like, boy, I can't believe I gotta rerun this. But the fact that I have original content to run and I have game to play, like, man, it's hard to say things when you're just like, you know what, I'm having too, I'm having too good of a time anyway, so... What's my biggest gripe? Uh, not a whole lot when you look back at the scheme of things. It's, I really enjoyed Bloodborne. I wish the new game plus was better. But boy, I've gone back and played Bloodborne, I think, seven times. So at the end of the day, <laughs> even though the new game plus is not what I do, I end up just going back through it. I'm gonna get thrown super hard, I can feel it. There you go. Even. Your hair goes through walls, girlfriend, that's cheating. Even though I want the new game plus to be better, I'll go back and play that game multiple times and run through it, and, like, it's a good book. So. Yeah. Tales of Vesperia, same thing. I think I've played that so many times 
I had it memorized at one point where I was like, this ain't even, this ain't even the boss fight I need. I can figure that stuff out so stupid fast, but yeah. Same thing for Dark Souls and same thing for Demon Souls. Are they, are they the new game plus I want? No, but they're the games I enjoy and I'm gonna play them up. Come on, Kodama, bro. We got adventure waiting for us. Yep. Let's do it. Oh, not that way. Unfortunately, I didn't enjoy Sekiro enough to run through it again. That's that's the one thing that I wish I enjoyed more, was that I enjoyed Sekiro more than I did. Um, I thought it was good. It was really a satisfying game to play and to, like, to win. I thought it was great to win at Sekiro. And then it started getting kind of... It kind of got bloodborne for me, like, I don't know if it's going to make a lot of sense, but to me it does. It started getting kind of bloodborne in the sense that, like, another being was coming and affecting things, when really I just wanted, like, a samurai ninja thing. I get it. Creative license and everything is fantastic, and I think From Software has really made some good strides in their, uh, their, their games. I just wish that if it felt, if it was a From Software game, it didn't feel like it went into this realm of long elongated necks, Cthulhu looking monster-esque things, uh, like, you know what I'm saying? I know not all of them feel like that, but it always feels like there's some kind of eldritch thing happening, and I would have liked it if that wasn't the case. You know? Like, your friend turns into a koi fish, or you, or not your friend, but the guy's turning into, like, a sea creature, and you're like, ah, the minute for me that that stuff starts to kind of happen, I go, oh, well... I've seen this before, and I've seen it in the Eldritch Horror things, and I think one of the problems is that I've seen it so, so early on in just kind of like my life experience that I went, oh, that's Cthulhu-esque kind of stuff. It's, there's a movie, um, oh, sorry, hitting the mic again, scratching the nose. These fights make my nose super itchy. So if there's a movie, uh, something of Dakon or something, where you're in a, you're in a seaport, <laughs> you, uh, not... Not you, but the main the main characters in a seaport, and it is um, oh something of Dagon. That's what it is, and you, they're in a seaport, and they all turn into fish people halfway through. And I'm sorry, guy, you're enjoying your tea, but I'm putting you in your place. You're a spooky demon. And when everyone starts turning into fish people, they start transforming into these grotesque monsters. They start getting the elongated tentacle things. They start getting these things. I, my brain goes to this Dagon movie, and since that's one of the main characters in the Cthulhu mythos. Or the HP Lovecraft mythos things, you look at it and you're like, oh, or at least I do, and I go, I don't, I don't want this thing happening anymore. I would like it, I would like it to turn into something else. And I think from software games have kind of pigeonholed themselves because Bloodborne was like that. For me, uh, Sekiro became kind of those feelings, not nearly as bad. I enjoyed it in Bloodborne because Bloodborne had that mystery. Um, Sekiro. It presented itself, and here's what's interesting as to why I liked it in one and didn't like it in the other. Sekiro presented itself as a ninja game and samurais and big stuff happening. Uh, Bloodborne always presented itself as a monster hunting game, and then a mystery kind of thing happened. So I thought I was going to fight werewolves, and I got to fight werewolves, but then I thought I got to do some other things, and true, I got to do those things also, and then on top of that came Cthulhu-esque things. And I said, wow, this really thickens the plot. Once you get that madman's memory and those insights, it unveils an entire different part of the game. But it's introduced in the very beginning that something is happening. Um, in the beginning of Sekiro, it's not like anything is really going on. Um, and I get true that I'm, I'm probably stretching this a little bit far. But in my brain, I went, uh... I don't like this. I don't like, and it weren't really hit me. It wasn't on, um, it was in that spot where you're gritting the great koi fish. That's, that's where all of a sudden I said, uh, I don't know if I'm liking this. Everything else about Sekiro, I really enjoyed, except for like the last fifth of the game. I was not a fan of that. I enjoyed coming back out of that area, but that area kind of took me out of the game for a while. And I, it kind of, didn't suck me back in the way I was in the beginning. Once you once you jump on that giant bundle of ropes, that huge monster that moves, um, 
I think it takes a takes a turn for the worst for me. I'm sure other people really enjoyed it, and props for you guys because that is that's great. I just I don't know. I lost a little bit of something after I jumped on that big bat. After that big rope man. After I jumped on that guy, it was it was done for me. You come back, you get the sword that splits all that good stuff, and then you fight the last guy. And for me, it was just kind of like, oh, I guess it's I guess it's over. So yeah, it's kind of where it fell. And I don't know, maybe maybe I'm approaching from the wrong angle, but maybe I should go back and play it and see what it's see if I missed anything story-wise, which trust me, I'm sure I did. But game-wise, I think it's a fantastic game. But story-wise, I don't know if I would sit through it again. Simply because either I got super lost story-wise, or that one area I just am not interested in. Sometimes a single area in a game will make me go, oh great, I have to go through this area again? Like, uh, uh, what is it, in Neo 1, the ocean roars again? Every time I have to play that and I'm starting a new game, I go, oh boy. I do not want to do this again. <laughs> Every single time. Don't, Snowclops, I'm just investigating this room. You're too big to fit in here. What do you think you're going to accomplish? Oh! Uh, no. I gotta beat you fast. Here you go! Because I gotta save my anima charge for the snowclops over here. There it is. Take it! Also, I would have liked more than just a sword in Sekiro. I know, I think that's a lot of people's... Either people go, great, I got just a sword, right? Or they go, I really would have liked more than just a sword. And um, for me, I would have liked more than a sword. I know that we can use them as like sub weapons like Mega Man, but at the end of the day, I end up using the shield more often than anything else because it had a much better function, I feel like, than most of the other things. Like, don't get me wrong, that spear was pretty cool built into the arm. I enjoyed a lot of those ideas. Um, I thought the kunai built in the arm in the beginning were really cool, uh, but since really you can only upgrade certain ones to their full capacity, you really had to pick or choose, and for me the choice is really easy. I'm going to go for the option that lets me stay alive more. Especially against those hidden ghost dudes. Like, I'm going for that every single day. Alright, we've made it. Dang it! Oh wait, no, there's a staircase. Here we go, this is where I wanted to end up. Can I open this? I couldn't open it the first time, because there's a tiny little skeleton. Uh, can, can you leave my cat alone, please, ma'am? I'm coming for you. Here you go. Don't disturb my cat. Here you go. Stop your yelling. Nope. There it is. Boom. There we go. I think what else we got me during Sekiro, not to go on a rant about systems is that when you went from attack one to attack two like attack level um it, you it was just insane how much it actually helped you out and i get that that's the idea behind it but boy that boost if you don't weren't, if you were on top of it and collecting it i mean i have a problem with collecting things so of course i was running after those boosts like crazy but if you did not do it because I, I had a buddy who did not do it as hard. He was left in the dust for a long time. And I didn't know what to tell. I was like, guy, you just have to go back and get those items. But there's nothing you're gonna... I mean, I'm sure people on YouTube have done, like, the the no upgrade run. But for some people who will never do those, like, the, attack, the no attack upgrade just does not make sense sometimes. Oh boy, my body is hurting. I don't want to transform. I'm transforming. I'm doing it. It's morphing time. You are done! There it goes. Going back. Sweet. Thank you very much, God Dragon Jewel. Okay. Um, we gotta get in here. Same thing for the little health upgrades. I feel like sometimes it was just 
too big of a jump sometimes. Um, but I feel like I didn't I didn't miss anything, so for me it wasn't a huge jump, but for some of my buddies it was it was a pretty aggressive like, oh I missed that? Well I screwed myself. And it's, it kind of felt like that sometimes. I enjoy this water lowering. I how it just keeps revealing more and more of the level. It's like the fog of war just disappearing in StarCraft. Um, yeah, let's take it this way. Why not? Wait, have we already been through here? We have been through here. I don't think we can go any lower, can we? Huh. Well, there's a lot down there. This is going to be one more level that lowers. Maybe. I just forgot to get down there. Um, huh. Alright, let's try this. Overall, as a game, I, yep, I thought Sekiro was going to be like my game of the year. Last year, I was like, wow, this game is a, this game is amazing. I did go around, I told everyone about it, I said, guys, you got you to gotta check this game out. The intro to it, it leaves such like a stark impression in your brain that it is just, it is, it feels good to play. I showed my friends who didn't, who don't even play video games. They were like, dude, what are you trying to show me? And I was like, guy, look at this right now. Look at this. Look how, look at this. Like, this is amazing. This is video games right here. And true, that game is video games. That is what I'm talking about. The game is great. Up until a point when I lost interest and I, I was so bummed. There you go, take that, go for a swim. I don't want your shenanigans happening around me ever again. Um, okay. There we go. Yeah, I really wanted to, I really wanted to be pulled back into it. Like, I even watched people play Sekiro, and I could not get back into it. I was like, man, these guys are enjoying this game so much more than I am right now, and I, uh, I can't get into it, but I wish I could. Yeah, it was one of those kind of things, where the struggle was real getting back into it. How do I get over there? Can't just hop down, right? Can't be that easy. I love that grappling hook idea. I thought that was... It flowed so well, and it was such a non-intrusive user interface that when you were actively zipping through a level, you could just look and see it. Oh, man, you guys know, if you watch that Zone of the Inners playthrough I put up um, on my YouTube channel, you, it's like... It's, it's like, man, this guy loves that user interface, and it is very true. I, I am a sucker for a solid user interface. You have got me. You you won me over. You get something good like that, and I am putty in your hands. I can't even deny it. Like, Dead Space? That game terrifies me. But I played the demo multiple times just because I loved how the UI worked and how it looked. I thought it was fantastic. Don't hit me like that, guy. I have places to be. You're ruining my day. What would you get? There it is. Got that dead space. It spooks me every single time. I'm thinking about playing it, but I always I was consider going back to it and trying it out again. But I hate body horror stuff. It disturbs me on a level that I think it disturbs everyone else on because you know it's body horror. It's what it's made to do. It's made to like, it's made to creep you out. But uh, but yeah, the minute legs start coming out of someone's mouth and trying to murder me. I just, I, I can't, I cannot handle that. Granted, I have watched a lot of body horror films, and I'm trying to get better with it. I'm trying to be a big man and just, and just not feel like in my bones something horrific is about to become on, just, just about to jump on screen. But I think the problem was when I was like, when I was like, what was I, five or something, I saw the fly. And every time after that, like, not not the old version where his head turns into a fly, but like the Jeff Goldblum version where he's a disgusting thing that's throwing up on donuts and drinking them through his proboscis. Like, that's, <laughs> that's, that's where I drew the line. I said, oh boy, my little kid brain cannot take this anymore. I watched that movie start to finish, but ever since then, 
Uh, I think that was too. Sh I think that was too strong of a start. Without a doubt, that was definitely that was definitely too strong of a start into the world of body horror. Oh god, woman, get off of me, please! I'm just trying to leave. I'm so far from the starting position. I don't know where the next shrine even is. Bop. Blocks. Oh boy. Oh boy. Okay, here you go. There you go. Are you down yet? Yeah, you're down. There we go. Easy. Okay, who else do we have around here? I don't know any other, like, amazing body horror films because, well, once again, I avoid them. I try to. But I try to, I try to hit the tame ones, right? Like, I haven't seen the Human Centipede films, because I think they're just going to be gross, but they're not going to be gross in the way I find it gross, they're just going to be like, oh, they got sewn butt to mouth. Like for me, it's like, oh god, you got kidnapped in the German Alps, <laughs> not the German Alps, but you got kidnapped over in Germany and you got sewn to this guy, which is fine, and I'm sure it's terrifying in its own right, right? But here's my thing, I don't find that kind of body horror scary. Because that, to me, that's more of like an abduction thing, and this might sound kind of weird. To me, that's more a person gets abducted in Germany, and then horrific things happen to them, which ends up unfortunately being you have been sewn butt to mouth to a person. And trust me, I, I'm sure we can all say that we want zero parts in that. However, and here's my big however, they don't transform into anything. The minute people transform into something in front of my brain, like I hate it. I can feel the recoil in my body. Once, once like something sprouts a leg out of somewhere there's not supposed to be a leg, or like the thing where the dog starts bursting open and there's like a, a horrific maw, and then there's also tentacles flapping everywhere, and things are beginning to just happen. I'm so glad I saw that little, uh, that little lever. However, I'm stuck now. Am I stuck now? No, okay, it's shifted this way. Fantastic. Um, yeah, once that happens, I have to force myself to really look at it and stare it down and be like, I am not gonna be flinching at this. And that's how I had to deal with every other horror film that I've watched that I think is gonna spook me out. But, but yeah, I just, oh no. Is there a Biwa Boku Boku over here? Is that what I'm hearing? The call of the Biwa Boku Bokus? Alright, we're back here. Sweet. Um, but yeah. If there's any good ones you guys think of, let me know, but... Otherwise, I do not know how to treat that genre. I don't know how we got on this tangent of body horror stuff. I lost it a long time ago. I'm just trying to draw a map in my brain of where we actually are in this game. Because now that we've gone down multiple levels, now I'm lost. Body horror, the fly... Sekiro. Uh, Sekiro doesn't really have body horror, though. Unless that's what actually got me started on it, then it must have it somewhere. But... Not that I can remember. Hmm. Yep. I just lost it in the brain, who knows. But, uh, but yeah. Those kinda, those kinda... Oh! Dead Space, that's what it was. So, that kind of stuff, talking about UIs, uh, in Sekiro, that was a long tangent for a UI. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, the Sekiro UI, the Minikun Grappling Hook, oh man, it is so good because it's not intrusive at all into what you're trying to accomplish. You just point it, it gets a little change in the, in the cursor, and you're good to go, like, it swings from place to place. <laughs> Excuse me, drink water too fast. And, and, man, yeah, it's a, it's a great UI. It's... You, visually and auditory, it's just, it's so good. Like, uh, what I was talking about in Zone of the Enders with how the game tells you that something is happening and something is done happening and something has started to happen, the human brain reacts to the audio, like your auditory stimulus, really fast. So, like, how they put the counter noise in here as an audio thing is amazing because your brain goes, oh, I'm about to get, I'm about to do something, I need to counter this. Or, oh, this is about to happen, I need to do this. So, 
it happens so fast that you don't even need to know which direction it's coming from or what's actually going on because your brain has already figured it out for you. And I think that's really nice to know. Does this... Oh boy, that would have been bad. I cannot do that. Does this bring me somewhere? I hope. Somewhere useful, maybe? This is a shrine? No, that's a pile of books. Huh. Okay, well, let's, let's take it up here. Why not? We can't go down anymore, I feel like. Uh, it's pointing this direction, but I, haven't, I still haven't found a shrine. Have I missed something, like, super obvious, I wonder? Huh. Inspiring gym. Oh, inspiriting gym. Huh, I've been reading that all along the entire time. Okay, let's go down here. Maybe this is something I need. This is probably how I get down to that. Yeah, this is the snow clops. Alright, bro. Check it. There you go. No, eyes up. You don't want to be getting shot in the face with stuff like this. It hurts. Nope. Here we go. Easy. Alright, let's do this. <gasps> um Huh, I wonder where this leads. Let's let's investigate. Alright. Have I been here before? I have been here before, okay. So we just have to not fall in that water. Um, let's see. If we can take this, let's go down. We've killed all the demons. We haven't rested a shrine yet, so there shouldn't be anything really opposing me getting in here. Yep, we'll open that. We're gonna go this way. Did you drown? Yeah, you drowned. Okay, what's today's date? The 25th? Yeah, I guess so. That guy drowned just a little bit ago. Let's, uh, moment of silence for our, for our boys. Alright, moment of silence over. We've all drowned. It's rough. Um, let's go this way. We're on the right track. Yep, I remember this part. Big windy vine thing. All the way up and around. Sony, leave me alone with this. I've got demons to slay. Is there a... Is there a shrine through here, I wonder? There is. There is a shrine through here. Okay, now I can just run straight through. Fantastic. That's what I was worried about. Alright, let's make an offering that they will never refuse because they're my homies. Um, yes sir. Yep. There we go. Okay. Receive Kodama Blessing about the healer one. Right? If that's active. There we go. Kodama Bazaar, what do we have here? Nothing. Oh, we got the Sloth Talismans. This is what everyone's using, I guess. This is what we used a lot later on. My friend was using these like crazy. I was just running through like a moron with a sword. Just swinging it at everything. And it's like, Demon, you wanna go? I have a pointy stick. I hope you are ready for my moves. And that's kinda how I approached every situation with my pointy stick. Titles. Yokai Ability Damage. Yes. Nothing there I can do. We, we've definitely gotten enough points in dual swords. Fantastic. Um, switch glaive? Maybe. Let's, let's do some switch glaive stuff. What do we have here? Ooh, the echoing thunder. I did, uh, I did like the hatchets. But let's, let's see what we can do. Seething dragon? Oh, okay. I do like this. Oh, that's a good one too. But that is a huge bonus to just attack. Now let's try it. Nope, nope, excuse me. Oh, this is bad. This is bad. This is bad. We're starting this boss fight out wrong. Uh, excuse me, sir. This is terrible. You know, let's just pop one of these bad boys and then let's just run up this hill. I don't even care. We're starting the boss fight with one less, uh, one less elixir. My guy. You gotta get back to your bells at the shrine. They've been waiting for you for like three hours. 
I do like the Switchglaive combos. I think they're fantastic, especially the shift you can do. That feels good to do on someone. The problem is that my key is not handling it very well. Also, give me one second. OBS is doing something funny. It's recording something really weird. Hold on, I gotta restart it. <laughs> 